Alright, I've started streaming. Does it show it? Oh, okay, it is. Okay, that's good. There we go. Alright, then let's... Let me just hop into the class. Just use calendar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure then. I'll just use calendar. Oh, this echo is not nice. Audrey and is the other? Is there? Where are the other kids? Oh, okay. And we should be now. Then okay. Yes. Yeah. So we can start. Yeah. Hang on. All right. Actually, I should probably put them on separate tabs so I can keep an eye on each of those. Wait, Kevin, what is that thing? Oh yeah, yeah, I haven't shared my screen yet, have I? Oh, an entire screen. How about an entire screen? Go screen one, share, okay. There we go, this is our third session. Wait, are you finished your screen? Yeah, I can see it. Alright, well, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I should be live streaming. Yeah, it is, okay. That's good, that's good. Alright, hello. And today we'll start the third session. So pretty much the supplemental classes do start next week. Um, yeah, if I remember, you were the one who went to Algebra 2, like, two weeks ago. Yeah, your math level should be, uh, around Algebra 2, just sent you back to Algebra 1 to learn some terminology. Uh, the tutoring is fine well, today, so what we'll be doing today is that we'll go over the rest of the problems in the AMC 8 set 2007 that we did the last session. Like, uh, I think we stopped at problem 17, um, right? And then we'll go over to the, two, uh, to the 2015 AMC 8 set. So next week for tutoring, we'll begin to cover problems related to what is being taught in supplemental classes. So they actually start on the 25th. Uh, but for Algebra 1 and 2, they start on Friday. You can check the calendar for more information. So, since the primary function of tutoring is to solidify, okay, um, if you have any questions about Algebra 1, you can feel free to ask during this session. Any problems you need help with or anything? Let me get my... I have a quick question. What is the AMC? Ah, uh, AMC. Okay, hang on a second. Let me... Alright, uh... Let me open up the slides from last week real quick, and so I can go over it. Oh, uh, yeah. So what grade are you right now? You're going to sixth, right? I'm going to sixth. Yes. All right. That's that's good. So I think this was the one we had last week. Okay. So let me just show you. So basically, um. The AMC-8 is uh, designed for middle schoolers, and it's it has multiple types of math involved, right? So it'll have Algebra 1, Geometry, Statistics, Probability, etc. It's 25 questions, and it's a 40-minute test. If I remember correctly, usually you take it around November. Um, yeah, I guess so next year, since you're going to middle school, um, you should be able to sign up for the test uh, this year. But I guess I would recommend you waiting until 7th grade until you've learned a bit more math. AMC 8 is all about, like, creativity, like, how you approach math problems. Uh, another thing about that is, uh, because there's an 8 in its name, right, AMC 8, it's usually it's 8th graders who take the test. So you, um, but you can take it in 6th or 7th grade as long as you're in middle school, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, a lot of people do take it 7th grade, because that time you get uh, enough time to prepare for it, and also, if you get a score that you don't like, you can, um, retake it again 8th grade. And, um, pretty much you can, uh, I think you can go to the AOPS website, Art of Problem Solving, to sign up for AMC8. Yeah, if you do really well on AMC8, you can go and maybe participate in stuff like AMC 10, that's the version for 10th grade, or uh, even beyond that, like, uh, Amy. Yeah, what were you going to ask? What does AMC 8 have, uh, like, what impact does it have on, like, my grade or anything? Oh, it doesn't, it honestly, it really doesn't matter. 
um, what score you get in rel uh, in relation to your grade. If you do horrible on the test, um, it doesn't really impact your grade in school at all. Uh, if you do horrible on the test, no one's gonna know if you don't tell anybody, right? Uh, if you do really good on the test, I guess you could show it to various, uh, you could show it on various applications in the future. Well, that's probably mostly for middle school, right? AMC 8 does lose quite a bit of value by the time you get into high school. High school, you could use AMC 10, stuff like SAT for applications. And by applications, I don't mean college applications. I mean, like, various summer programs. For example, uh, there's, there's like, some, there's some tech camps uh, around here, and some colleges like to host summer programs. So what exactly... Is AMC for them? Like it doesn't impact the grade or anything. Oh, it's a math competition. So you compete with other people who are taking the same test as you? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's in, it's held in each middle school. Uh, yeah, you should probably have one uh, a testing site in your middle school. You just have to. So, yeah, you have to go there during school hours and maybe like a little earlier before school starts and you'll be sitting with everybody. Like, usually there's like, oh, uh, it's probably say like 80 students per school who take it. That's like the average. I don't remember. But, yeah. You can choose whether you want to take it or not. I'm just going over these problems real quick because they are actually very good practice problems for middle schoolers. Um, and, uh, it's also right now for tutoring, we're in this weird place between, uh, just starting and supplemental classes. So next week, supplemental classes do start. In case you don't know what supplemental classes are, they're basically the classes that actually teach you from bottom up the courses. So we will because they're in two month segments, so there's one hour per week, that's eight hours total. We are going to go over the topics pretty briefly, because... Well, let me go over the main topic, because so eight hours is quite little to learn an entire subject. So that's why we have tutoring. Um, we'll solidify the concepts and do some practice problems and all that. And that's what we'll shift to doing that next week. This week, I just wanted to do some AMC practices. Okay, if you want to do some more AMC practices, you can always go on to the a AOPS website. There's a uh, previous practice test there. Uh, any other questions? Yes. So we actually didn't uh, sign up for the supplemental. So do you recommend um, both class? Because we only uh, signed up for the, um, the tutoring for Algebra 1. Oh, for supplemental? Yeah, sure. I guess you could attend the, uh, the supplemental classes for Algebra 1 as well. Because uh, right now, like her math level is above Algebra 1, but she doesn't know a lot of the terminology uh, and the foundations you need in Algebra 1. I guess she okay. would do well for Algebra 1 tutoring. So... I mean, supplemental so, classes. So are the two classes uh, material related? I mean, if we don't sign up for the supplemental, we, we still can follow the, the tutoring, right? Yeah. Okay. So for the tutoring, you will be mostly covering AMCA, like practice problems, is that right? Oh, uh, not mostly. For the, just for these two weeks that I've been covering them, okay. I could cover them if you want, but like, it's pr the tutoring is pretty much, if you have any questions, you can come ask me, uh, related to the subject uh, of the tutoring, right? For this would be Algebra 1, and uh -huh. for tutoring, we'll also be going over some practice problems related to the supplemental classes, or like okay. during that time of the school year. Okay, okay, got it, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, welcome. Alright then. Let us get started, I guess. So, right, right. I think last week we left off on 70, right? Oh, uh, okay. Um, problem number 70. Let me open up one of these uh, whiteboards real quick. That's going to be a little laggy too. Oh, this internet is quite laggy. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so this is one of those, okay, ratio problems. So a mixture of 30 liters of paint is 25% red tint, 30% yellow tint, and 45% water. 
So 5 liters of yellow tint are added to the original mixture. Um, what is the percent of yellow tint in the new mixture? I guess, yeah, this is an Algebra 1 problem, technically. It is, yeah, it covers ratios. So this problem would fall purely into the category of Algebra 1, which we're talking about. All right. Oh, let's see. Sorry, let's see. Let me choose a pen. Oh, that's a bit skinny. It's not covered up problem. Uh, wait a minute. Is it not in the liquid? Huh, okay, my wake card is not connected. started of 30 liters and uh, since 30 percent of the yellow tint uh 30 percent of the paint is yellow tint right so to find what percentage of the 30 uh liters is yellow paint we just multiply that by 3 over 10 or 30 over 100 because uh the percentage is the hundreds in the hundreds place right so if we do that real quick we'll end up with nine liters in the original right liters of yellow paint in the original Alright, so what they what you want into the question is that what if they add five liters to that, right? So nine plus five is equal to fourteen. So what if they add uh, five liters? What is the new percentage of yellow tint in the mixture? So nine plus five is fourteen. So they have fourteen liters of yellow paint out of the thirty liters of yellow paint. So you want to convert um fourteen over thirty to a percentage, right? To some percentage. So a percent percentages are over a hundred. So you essentially okay, let me drag this up. Here. I'm running out of space. So essentially, uh, you want uh to put fourteen over thirty as a fraction of x over one hundred. X is the percentage. So usually you could solve it. There's there are many ways to do this, but the fastest way is cross multiplying. Which, Right now, what we have is a proportion. So cross-multiplying is pretty much you multiply the numerator of the first fraction by the denominator of the second fraction, and uh, and vice versa. And um, pretty much, uh, to show your work, you pretty much do something like that. And uh, it results in saying that 30x is equal to uh, 1,400, right? So you multiply these two, and it's equal to the product of these two. And if you do that real quick, that would equal to 40, right? X is equal to 40 percent. That would be mm -hmm. the choice. All right. Sorry, I was stumbling a bit the first time I explained it because I was having quite a bit of issues with my way. Next time, I think, yeah, I tried to download the annotate tool so I could directly annotate on the slides, but. This is problem with my computer that it just doesn't finish downloading and it drags my RAM all the way up. Okay. Uh, do you want to go into the next problem now? Mm -hmm. Alright, then. So, do you actually want to try solving this? This is like, this is a logic problem. Do you want to try solving it first or do you want me to just go over it with you? I'm going to read it first. Okay. Wait, so there's two numbers that have 99 digits in them. So it says the product of two 99 digits numbers has a uh, has a thousands digits A and a units digits B. Uh, so what is the sum of A and B? So uh, what are you asking? Real quick, could you like restate your question? So what is the two 99 digit numbers? So it has 99 digits. Okay. Yes. That sound, 
So, so the AMC uh, problems like to throw these daunting things, uh, these daunting numbers at you to make you stumble, right? Usually to solve these, there's some sort of trick. So, the product of two 99-digit numbers, 99 digits is a lot, right? You probably couldn't even fit that horizontally on a paper, but if you think about it, well, uh, actually, uh, I'll give you some time to read over the rest of the question. So I've got my essay written. Mm -hmm. So the 303 right there is the end, end of the chance. Oh, right? hold on. Oh, wait, could you give me a second? Give me a second. I have, okay. I think I'm not being able to. Yeah, okay, my computer's lagging. Wait, let me close a few other tabs real quick. All right. Oh, you might have seen. videos like this before but here's the big secret anyone can make one of these videos in the product of this one where it's alternating zeros and five has thousands digit a and units digit b what is the sum of a and b so we want to find what's a plus b it's digit b what is the sum of a and b so we want to find what's a plus b Alright, alright, what did you want to ask? Oh wait, so, wait, someone's trying to call, okay, real quick, okay, so, what are you, what are you asking? So when they say thousand digits A, do they mean, like, something, like, in the thousands place? Yeah, what number well, A? actually, okay, yeah, so, so, uh, what they're asking is, this is the first, oh wait, do you see my mouse? This is the first... Uh, 99 digit number so of course you're not gonna list out every single digit because um that would be way too much right mm -hmm. and this is the second so it has a thousand uh, oh yeah also okay mm -hmm. uh by the way do you have a notebook out right now or do you have like a piece of pencil or paper i have a notebook and a pencil all right that's that is good uh Alright, so, yeah, by, it means thousandth digit, uh, A, and, wait, actually, let me bring, hold, bring up my notepad, uh, right, 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 okay, please don't give me any issues this time, alright, so, you want to find the sum of A and B, so this is the units digit, and that's the thousandth digit, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay. I'm having doctor handwriting right now. It's quite different. Control that. Um, I think the answer is five. Alright, why do you say the answer is five? Because it's asking for the thousand digit and the units digit. It's asking so for the sum of them, right? The A for the thousands is zero and the unit in B is five, right? Alright, so why do you say that? Because that number is in the thousands place, and the other number is in the unit place. Alright, uh, okay, so, okay, uh, if we take a look at it, right, so, oh, uh, first of all, it's actually, the answer is actually not 5, right? So, could you, like, I, I don't think I'm going along with your line of thought, why, why do you say it's 5? When they say thousands, what do they mean? By like the one thousandth place? Yeah. Same for the units, right? Units means ones place, right? Yeah. So for so at the very end for the thousands, it's zero. And the other one is five. Wait, why do you say the thousands is zero? Okay. Wait, hang on, I'm covering the problem. The thousandth place value is a zero. But they're asking for these two specific numbers, right? Uh, hold, hold, hold on. You two, are you, you two, are you there? Actually, yeah. what was your name? Sato? Wait, sorry, I, I'm kind of forgetful with names. What was your name again? You two. Oh, you two, okay. Okay, 
Uh, hello YouTube, I'm back. Uh, you're a little bit late. We have like half an hour left of the class. I'm a little confused right now. Alright, 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 that's fine. Oh, hang on a second. Alright, I'm having so many technical difficulties during this. Give me like three more minutes. Okay, I really have to fix my computer. It's quite a mess right now. So I've been downloading quite a bit of software for my upcoming because my school is starting tomorrow, actually. Has your school started yet, Audrey? I started school too, like, on, on the 18th. Okay, so you started, like, on Friday? It's... Thursday. Thursday, okay, Thursday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Today's the 21st. Okay, not the 22nd. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me fix an issue real quick. You two just take a chill a little bit. Okay, hang on. Um, has thousands digit and it's alternating zeros and threes. And this one where it's alternating zeros and five has thousands digit A and units digit B. So first. For the thousands digit, the way in which we can produce a thousands digit that's not zero is going to be either multiplying a hundreds digit by something or multiplying a thousands digit by something. So I want to just look at from the thousands digit and below. And the only way we can get a units digit that's not zero is by multiplying a units digit by a units digit. So I just want to look at the ends of these. And so, since the thousands digit is zero in both cases, we only really need to look at 303 and 505. And that's going to tell us whatever the thousands digit comes out to be there, and the units digit, that's what the thousands digit and units digit is going to be of the product of, of these very big 99 digit numbers. So, when we do 303 times 505, what we get here, so 300 times 500, we're going to get 150,000, and then 500 times 3 is going to be 1,500, and then 5 times 300 is going to be 1,500. And then 3 times 5 is going to be 15. And so what we get here is so 5, 1, this is going to be 0, and 153,015. So here A is equal to 5, and 1,000. So here A is equal to 5, and 1,000 digit is 3, so B is equal to 3. Alright, sorry for that hold up. Alright, I guess this week I'll have to really annoy to get my lag down. Alright, you guys there? Yeah. Okay, I think I understand what you mean, right? So by the when you're saying thousands digit, you're talking about because they're alternating between so the first number is alternating out alternating between three and zero, right? So you're saying that this zero is a thousands place and you're just adding that to to uh the unit digit B, right? I, I, I knew that the problem, and uh, I realized what my problem was. Yeah, okay. So... Problem, so, it's not... Wait. Yeah, so, the, the problem with what you're saying is that, uh, is that you're trying to find the thousands digit uh, and the units digit of the product of these two numbers, right? You're not trying to find, uh, find them of each individual number. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... The trick for this is that you don't want to multiply it. You don't want to multiply the whole thing and then find out the thousands digits, right? Because uh, that would take a really, really long time if you're not using a computer. Because 99 digits by multiplied by another 99 digits, I don't think anyone could do that. So what you want to do is you want to take um, you want to take the last 
three digits here from the first number, which would be 303, and you want to multiply it. It's pretty much just a trick. Like, if you take the actually have the AOPS, you know, uh, this notification, um, it's pretty much uh, just to multiply these, right? So I take the 505 from here and the 303 from here. So the reason why you do this is we, we multiply this to find out A and B. Once we have, once we multiply these two, we'll, we'll already ha uh, have all the place values we need uh, in the product. Oh my God. Wait, wait, why is there so much notifications? Okay, right. All right, if you do a quick multiplication, okay, okay, why, why is it doing this? Why are notifications coming to the You'll find that, um, right, so it would be, what is this? Okay, this is actually, okay, I've got to fix this. So, 300 times, why is it not writing now? Uh, okay, I'm on the wrong tool. All right, that is 150,000 plus 15,000, right? You just multiply. 15,000 and then uh, 15. You add that together. Uh, let me do it quickly. Yeah, I have a bad habit of doing this stuff mentally. So this is this is like the end of that massive number, right? You have that massive uh, product between the two 99 digits numbers. You know this is the end. And if you take a look at the thousands place and um, the units place we have three here and five here right so it's just three plus five we add them together and it's eight right so this this problem is not testing you uh but if you know um of course everyone should probably knows three plus five right and it's not testing you if you can identify thousands or units digit it's just testing you if you know these tr uh tricks to be able to figure out um the the thousands and units digits of the product it's just one of these shortcuts, so the answer would actually be D. Yeah, so yeah, any question? No. Alright, I'm sorry. This was Should I do this problem? I guess we could we're both of these answers. Oh, actually, do you know the difference of squares yet? Have you covered that? Um, no. All right, then let's not do this problem. Then. All right. Oh, okay. Okay, this is one of those wacky. Uh, okay. All right, so before the district play, unicorns had won 45% of their basketball games. During the district play, they won six more games and lost two, finished the season having won half their games. How many games do the unicorns play in all? Do you want to try doing this problem first, and then, or do you want to go over it together? Could you, like, go over it? Okay, let me open up the revised form. Okay, so we have quite a fancy thing. Like, a whole lot of things. Sorry, no, mine's a little... I took the... Actually, I, 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 I took the booster, like, a few days ago, like, Two or a day ago, I've been. I, uh, I'm pretty sick these past few days now, so my throat is a little hoarse. Mine uh, is quite a massive headache right now. I, uh, All right, first let's examine the problem. So, before the district play, okay, you don't really need to know these terms, like, you know what a district play is? It's just you can you can just ignore these uh things in the problem because like all right you know what let me not go on another tangent so before the district play the unicorns had won forty five percent of their basketball games right so they played uh let's just use because I'm not a very creative person I'll use x and y as my variables so, so they played y games y games played Games one. I really need to find a better writing tool. Uh, I need to find something. This is so skinny. Okay. So, 
we were given uh, several pieces of information about this problem, but we do know that um, x is equal to 45% of y, right? Because they won 45% of their basketball games. So pretty much you could rewrite that as uh, you can rewrite that as x is equal to 0 0.45 times y. So the next, so yeah, doing these word problems is all about breaking down the information they gave you and applying them. So during the, uh, we're given two more pieces of information. So they won six more games and lost two. And we want to find how many games they played at all. We're also given something very important here. The end portion is that they won half of their games. So we can rewrite this x is equal to 0 0.45 times y as x over y is equal to 0 0.45. Right? So, and then if we add additional information given, okay, I need to find a way to rearrange this so it comes across. If we add the additional information, it is x plus 6, right? Because they, x represents the games won, and they won 6 more games. And uh, then it is y, oh wait, actually, yeah, plus 8, right? Because um, they played 8 extra games between these 6, because uh, they won 6 games and lost 2. So 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 total games played during the district play. And then, we're given that in the end, uh, this ratio, or this uh, fraction, is equal to 0 0.5, because they ended up winning half of their games at the end. So we're going to find how many games they played in all, which is this value, right? Because y games played is before they played the district. So it's y plus 8. That's what we want to find. So what would be your first step here to solve this, solving this equation? Oh, you there? Mm -hmm. So we have this whole equation, right? So what would be your first step to solve? Um, actually, how about how about we solve this one first, okay? Actually, how about how about actually? Oh, uh, so here you can't actually solve it straight up. You need another equation to solve this equation, and that's called a system of equations. So this is the other equation we're given pre before they played the district, right? Before they went to the district play. So, um. To put this in a better format, we should just use this one. So, because we're given what x is, it's 0 0.45 times y, right? Mm -hmm. So then we can pretty much just substitute x. So if we substitute x in the original equation, we have because that's two variables, right? So we can reduce it to one variable, and now all of a sudden it looks a lot easier to solve. Now, what would be your first step? Okay, how about, so the first step we would do in this case is, hang on, my little brother's shouting so loud right now, he has someone over house for a play date already, so first step is to multiply both sides by the denominator, right, it's, this is like undoing the equation, because the last step we did was dividing, so the denominator is y plus 8, if we multiply both sides by y plus 8, we'll end up getting, okay, I'm really at a lot of space, 0.45, y plus 6 is equal to 0 0.5y plus 4. You could split this into two steps, right? You could just say it's equal to 0 0.5 times y plus 8 and then distribute the 0 0.5. I guess uh, I reduce it to only one step because save time, right? Because on the actual AMC tests, you really don't have that much time per problem. Right, now if we want to solve the rest of this equation, the first step we would do is we want to isolate the variable and combine like terms. So, in this case, we would add, um, hang on, 
Actually, do you want to do this? Oh, actually, you know what? I'll just go over it. So, you could subtract both sides by... Okay, I'm actually out of space. Have you copied down everything so far? I Can I clear the frame and just start a new whiteboard? Yeah. Okay, okay. Alright, then. So, 0.45y plus 6 is equal to 0 0.5y plus 4. This is where we left off. So, if we want to solve this, right? So, we just, real quick, subtract both sides by 6. Oh, it's, and then we have 0 0.45y, it's equal to 0 0.5y. Alright, I need to tell them to quiet down. Oh my god. Alright, in this case, we would subtract both sides by 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5y, and we'll get negative 0 0.05 is equal to negative 2. Oh, why? We divide both sides by negative 0 0.05. And we get y is equal to 40. You follow me? Yeah. Mm, Alright, so let me clear the frame again. So we, now we know that y is equal to 40. Ah. So then we'll subtract. Uh, so then we'll actually we'll add eight, right? Because they played eight more games at the district play. Because right now the y we have is before they did the district play. Okay. And that is equal to 40. Oh my god, I'm all over there screaming so loud. You guys hear him? Should I Let's go ahead and tell him to quiet down? So the answer would be A. Alright, you guys want to move on to the next problem? Uh, can I finish copying down? Yeah, okay. Have you done systems of equations before? Um, I think my dad taught me. I see. Okay. All right. Um, should we do this one? Actually, should we? Let me think about it a little bit. Have you learned probability yet? Um. All right. If not, let's just. Oh, uh, let's. <laughs> yeah, let's just skip this problem, right? Because probably you do need quite a bit of probability to learn. Uh, okay. Problem 22, let me read this. Oh, uh, have you learned have you learned geometry yet? Like do you know a bit of geometry about? Yeah, we learned a little bit of geometry. Exactly. Different. Alright, so we learned In fifth grade? Like what? Did you give me some examples? They have like they taught us like angles and those kinds of stuff and shapes. Right. Like basic stuff. Alright, I see, the basic stuff. They don't really teach them in elementary. Yeah, they don't. I think... Oh... Uh, yeah, what math class are you taking this year then in 6th grade? In 6th grade? Um... My teacher's gonna teach, like... He already showed us everything we're probably gonna learn. And... There's a lot of stuff that's part of Africa 1 in there that okay. the general topic. I think the California standardized um, system, you learn Algebra 1 and Geometry by 8th grade. That's how it works, right? Well, let's probably not do this problem either. Or actually, what is this problem? Because you actually have not. Okay. I know. We're probably... Yeah, let's just probably... Oh, uh, yeah. have you learned about circles before? Like the radius, yeah. the equation uh, of like, like properties of um a circle. Those kind of stuff. 
Yeah, like the equation for the area of a circle, the equation for a circumference. Yeah, I think so. Alright then, do you want to give this problem a shot then? You should be yeah. fine. I, I, I can take a look at it, see if I know how to do it. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, then I'll leave it to you. Ask me any questions you have. What is a radii? Radii is the plural for radius, right? Like octopus, plural is um, octopi, I think. Three oh. radii. So, uh, can you see my mouse? Like, this is what they're talking about. These three. That's the radii. Oh, whoops. Hang on. Wrong. Okay. Yeah. Because it's given that this is the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. This is probability. Mm -hmm. This is also, this is probability as well. Um, I think you should be able to, because you've done probability before, right? Have you? Mm -hmm. I think you said you did a little bit of it. They just explained to us what probability is, and they just left it there. Oh, I see, okay. So, if you want to deep dive into probability, there is an AOPS book called Introduction to Counting and Probability. Alright, I guess we should just uh, move on to the next set then, actually. <laughs> Do you have any, like, um, like, math books that you would recommend me, like, I don't know, read or do? I mean, have, like, I did recommend you The Art of Problem Solving Volume 1, right? That one would be a pretty good uh, book for you to go over at your level. Because I have a book, and uh, it, I have a math book for middle school. It teaches you everything you need to know, apparently. Wait, what's it called? Uh, the Complete Middle School Study Guide, Everything You Need to, you need to Ace and Ask in One Big Fat Notebook. Oh, that one. I think I bought it before, like, a few years ago at Costco, I think. Yeah, they sold it there for them. I, I got it. I see. I see, I see. I mean, I guess that could help a bit. But honestly, those books kind of are like, uh, common core, right? Like, they go f standardized. Which is kind of, you're, you're quite far ahead of what is currently expected by the California government for a, a student incoming to 6th grade. Mm-hmm. Um... So, yeah, I guess it is for middle school. So you could learn a few things from there. But I really do recommend you to try the... Oh, actually, you should try to go to the Art of Problem Solving website. Um, and there are, there are materials available there. You can check them out yourself. I would recommend uh, the Art of Problem Solving Volume 1 to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, give me... Um, Alright, do you want to go over this problem? Actually, how much time? Do you yeah, we have five minutes left. Do you want to go over this problem? Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Well, why did they come up with these weird names? Um, so, Ancon wants to cover his room floor of his favorite red carpet. How many square yards of <coughs> red carpet are required to cover a rectangular floor? That is 12 feet long and 9 feet wide. Alright, so, um, I'm assuming you've definitely done, like, because try the area of a rectangle is just length times width, right? Mm hmm Alright, uh, let me open up one of those. Have I, do I have one open? Okay, yeah, I do have white. Wait, is it 36? 36? 36? 36? Oh, actually, it is not, okay? Let's... Go over it together real quick, and then we'll end this class. Right? This session, I have been a little bit, oh, especially for the first problem, been a little bit derailed. Man, it's fuzzy. I still, I gotta take my medicine after this real quick. Okay, so his favorite red carpet. So first, we're given that the floor is 12 feet long and nine feet wide, right? So it's 12 feet, 
times 9 feet because the area of a rectangle is just length times width. Mm -hmm. Right, so then we do the quick calculation that's 108 um, square feet. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this notation, but usually when we uh, try to say squared, we just put uh, the square, the exponents to the power of 2. Yeah. Over the yeah. land. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you are familiar with that. Alright. <coughs> so, this is actually a little trick. They're, they're trying to trick you, right? Because the actual question is asking you how many square yards of red carpet. But, they're, um, that's why they give you a hint. There are three feet in a yard. So, actually, when, when you say 36, um, you are close. But, um... Because you divided it by uh, three, right? Because there's nine square feet in a square yard. Where, where did my whiteboard go? Because there's nine square feet in a square yard, right? You just divide 108 by nine. All right. Because um, a yard, a square yard is three feet by three feet. And if you multiply that out, that is nine feet squared. Because... Oh. Like they give so, they're not, so they're asking for how many yards, not how many feet. Yes, they're asking for how many yards, not how many feet. So you, all you have to do in this case, you just divide 108 uh, divided by 9, and you end up with 12, and that would be A. Alright then. But it's asking how many square yards of red carpet are. Yeah, so 12 square yards. Because... Uh, this right here is a square yard. So one square yard is equal to three feet by three feet, right? So this is equal to uh, one yard by one yard. Okay, I get it. Yeah, so so one square yard is actually equals to nine square feet. So we we solved for the total area, and we div we simply just divided by that divided that by nine square yards to find you need twelve square yards, uh, uh nine square feet. I mean. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. Alright, I guess... <coughs> yeah. We'll end today's session here. Thanks for coming, guys. Alright, next week, um, the topics will be quite different, because, once again, we're covering the supplemental classes and stuff related to that. Okay. okay. Alright, bye. Bye. Uh...